Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon. This is Adrienne Montgomery. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to be talking about how to get your ERP buyer website website visitors to consider your vertical solution. And we're going to be talking about how to uh, create content that is, revolves around solving for the buyer's pain. I'm joined today, I'm so pleased to be joined today by Liz Anderson, Vice President of Marketing over at APS Payments. Liz has been uh, working with APS Payments for almost a year now, um, coming on close to a year, a year in, her, in October, time flies. Um, and she was announced CRN's 2019 Woman of the Channel recently, so congratulations, Liz. And Liz Thanks is going you. to talk, about you're welcome about her experience in the channel she's been working you guys probably know her from her days at avalara working with a number of channel partners she has a lot of experience and exposure to what works what doesn't work and she's going to be talking about um, some of her results in deploying deploying the strategy that we are going to refer to today and the tactics and then uh, thank you so much donna Krizik over at Acumatica. She's also with us today. She's a long-term industry veteran working with VARS. She currently works with over 200 plus Acumatica channel partners. She helps them build their marketing strategies. And uh, I'm so happy to be able to bring us all together. And hopefully you, VARS, will get the um, valued content out of this and you can apply it to your businesses uh, and just thank you so much for being with us today so erp bar is a we work with exclusively with erp bars and isds we help you generate inbound leads and opportunities uh, by way of our vertical and horizontal erp bar network uh, it's a, we have ERP VAR resides on the HubSpot content management software, and we help you with your inbound marketing efforts. Uh, we help to create that kind of inbound uh, vertical content that will engage with their website visitors so that they can convert on your forms and engage with your content. Uh, Acumatica, as you all are probably very aware, is a cloud ERP system and they develop adaptable cloud mobile technology, and it's an ERP that includes financials, distribution, manufacturing, project accounting, and CRM. And they're the only real true cloud ERP platform designed for the mid-sized customers. And APS Payments offers flexible and integrated payment solutions. They're a full service merchant services provider, and they help thousands of merchants daily process those integrated payments with Acumatica. They also work with other leading ERPs and they offer click to pay with Acumatica so that you can just go ahead and have the ease of use of paying right from an invoice in Acumatica. So I'm gonna go ahead and let Donna speak to this slide. She's gonna talk about some of her experience that she sees with VAR. So thank you so much, Donna. Sounds great. Thanks, Adrian. So I just wanted to provide a little context. I know that um, going vertical has been the drum we've been beating on for quite a while. And um, the thing that we emphasize at Acumatica is that you don't need to convert your whole practice to be industry specific tomorrow. You start small and you look at your database and you focus on you know a tiny slice whatever that is comfortable for you um, where you have some subject matter expertise and you speak the language so that your sales cycle gets a whole lot shorter and companies who've done this really see those results and this uh, this slide that i've got here has some outbound campaigns that we have run for our partners they provide us with their list and we send out a series of uh, four emails over eight weeks and designed to take some warm contacts and move them through the funnel. So you can see the, the stats here vary widely, and a lot of that is on the quality of the list, but the partner that I've highlighted here 
they focused on an industry. Their list was from a trade show and they took all of those names, they gave them to us. And to date, they're, you know, they're, they're done with the outbound email sends. We're done with that, but we're still doing call downs to everyone who clicked, which there are 37 of those. So they had the highest response rate, the highest click through rate. So that means their list is good and targeted, and it means their messaging is reaching the right people. So they're doing everything that we're going to look at today from Liz and Adrian. So just a good illustration to show you, you think that by focusing on an industry that you're limiting yourself when really you're just making your life easier. And like I say, start small. This is, you know, I'm sure, you know, of their, their database, 542 names, this is a tiny fraction of it. But out of that, they've got 37 warm opportunities now that they can nurture and they're getting our help on that. That's really all I wanted to cover. I'll hand it over to you well, guys. Thank, thank you, Donna. So uh, what Donna um, is showing here are results from having that communication that the audience is engaging with because you're speaking their language. So um, we're going to talk about today how to convert those uh, targeted website visitors to contact by speaking their language with call to actions and landing pages and your content so that they will convert on those forms and so you can start pushing them through the sales cycle through that buyer's journey. Uh, so we're going to also talk about how to differentiate your vertical offer and then how marketing and sales come together. So we're really recommending to pick one to three verticals based, based, um, based on your bandwidth and really stick with them and be consistent. Write all your content focused on these verticals so that when visitors visit your website, they can tell that you're the expert in their industry. And they'll stay with your content longer. They'll read more of it because they know that you know how to solve for the, the pain that they're looking to solve for in their specific industry. If you're too generic, you might not be getting any real traffic back to your website, that targeted traffic, uh, because you're trying to write your content for a more horizontal audience. And so it's really not resonating with anybody when they come back and visit your site. So uh, you want them to stay on your site, engage with your content, and you want to take that reader through the workflow and story so that they understand how you can help them specifically. And you know, sometimes you might be thinking that your words mean something to a target audience, but they might not mean uh, what you're intending it to mean to your target audience. You know, for example, if you wanted to go, go after food service distribution companies, that might be a little bit different than food distribution companies. Food service distribution is a whole nother, you know, is a, is a vertical in itself. So talking the language and walking the walk so that when they, when the visitor comes to your website, they know you know their business. And then here's a couple vertical CTAs I'd just like to cover for, you know, for webinars. If you're doing webinars, uh, you want to create calls to action that really resonate with that vertical market. So here at ERP VAR, we work with a lot of ISVs. So ISVs are targeting VARs like yourself. They're also targeting customers that are probably already using a or an ERP. So they want to make sure they, they keep their content focused on a particular ERP, ERP because the customer is already using it and the VAR represents it. So if the subject line contains the name of the ERP, then it's going to compel that um, the person that the invitation is sending to, in, if we're talking about an email, and also the call to action inside the e email to register for that webinar. If they're a QuickBooks reseller, then you wanna have QuickBooks in the CTA. If, and you want to have QuickBooks in the subject because you know that they represent QuickBooks. If they're QuickBooks users, same thing. You don't want to just have five ways to simplify shipping 
because then they don't know how it really applies to them and they just move on to the next email. Um, if you know you're talking to an Acumatica uh, end user or an Acumatica VAR, you want to have Acumatica in your call to action because that's your audience. If you want to target healthcare organizations, and you know you're sending that email invitation out to healthcare organizations, you wanna have healthcare in your subject. You wanna have healthcare in your call to action inside the email or on your landing or on your website where you're trying to drive traffic and tra drive conversion for that particular webinar. Liz, this is where you come in with APS. This, these are specific examples with APS. So I'll go ahead and let you Talk to this slide. Great. <clears throat> Thanks, Adrian. I've got some transitions here, so I'll tell you when to click next, okay? But yeah, AP, uh, APS Payments has um, has a vertical market in e-commerce space. You know, most people know us for our ERP integrations, whether that's Acumatica, Sage, SAP, uh, Intact, et cetera. And so, um, you know, we have some Magento, BigCommerce, uh, WooCommerce, integrations as well and so we've been doing a big push around e-commerce payments lately and so you, uh, we also try to create a theme that'll resonate with the industry and so you know it's back to school season right now and so we picked a theme around something that would resonate not only with the vertical but it's because it's the second largest shopping season of the year but also um, with our vertical which is the e-commerce space, space and then for the second one we focused on saving time and money which, you know, all businesses are looking for ways to, you know, automate and streamline what they're doing in the business. And then if you could click on the next one, Adrian, the last thing we typically like to do is include some sort of visual that we know will resonate with the um, audience. And so if it's e-commerce focused, including a shopping cart or including the logo of the solutions that you're promoting um, really pays off as far as making sure that you're talking the language and then also resonating with the visuals that that industry is used to seeing. We did an AD, AD test on one of our recent uh, emails that we sent out. And the first one um, on the subject line, all we did was change the subject. The first one had just the word e-commerce um, and it was this back to school webinar that I'm talking about here. Um, and then the second email had Magento e-commerce listed as well. And we had twice as many registrations come from the Magento e-commerce subject line than we did from the one that just listed e-commerce. So not only being able to focus on that vertical industry, but then also focusing on the solution that you're trying to promote um, really does pay off um, in dividends as far as getting awareness and getting people to click through and ultimately turn into those clients that we're looking for today. Uh, and this is a, an example of a landing page that that CTA would go to. And as you can see, I've got the CTA listed on there, but we once again repurposed the you know, the industry names, we've got e-commerce listed on there. If you could click one more time, Adrian. We also include information on uh, industry stats. You know, you want to not only be able to talk the talk when you're doing a vertical focus, but you also want to make sure that they understand that you are paying attention to their industry and you have insights that you can share with them. And so for this one specifically, we talked about how the back to school season was the second largest how there were 28 million households and 54 million students that were out there um, in this back to school season shopping and what the total spend was around 83 million. And so these are stats that people that are in this industry really like to pay attention to because it's something that provides them some education for their own business as well. And then, as I mentioned, we carry over the visual and the CTA into the landing page so that as they click on that CTA, they know they're going to the right spot. I highly encourage that any graphics you create, you not only include in your CTA, but then you also carry them through to your email, um, as well as to your um, to your landing page, so that when somebody gets to that landing page, they know that they're in the right spot. And this is um, the landing pages for specific vertical webinar registrations that we have experienced with at ERP VAR, in addition to what Liz just talked about, kind of reinforcing that vertical approach. So with this webinar financial dashboard, dashboards and KPIs that matter for your healthcare organization is really honing in on the pain of um, healthcare organizations that might have multi-entities uh, multi and financial consolidations across entities. And so that's really a pain for healthcare organizations. So this webinar is honing in on that to capture how they could solve for that pain specific to healthcare. And when a healthcare organization might land on this page, they're going to be compelled 
to register for this webinar, uh, if it has the healthcare oriented content on it, just with those keywords for healthcare, it makes so much of a difference because they know that it actually applies to them because you're using their language and you're not trying to speak to everybody. You're actually speaking to them. Uh, so that's what we have seen that works. And over here to the right, uh, the Acumatica e-commerce shipping and payments, you place Acumatica in there and anyone who's an Acumatica reseller or an Acumatica user, and that's a lot of our database, our resellers and users, and we sort our database by Acumatica users and resellers, and we only invite those contacts to these Acumatica webinars so we feel comfortable and confident that we can put Acumatica in the subject line, in the landing page, the registration page, and in the body of the content, because we're only focusing on those Acumatica-related contacts. And we just get so much more registration from that. And then here's a couple um, CTAs that are focusing on verticals. Um, here's one from Acumatica, KPIs for Construction, your concise guide. And it helps that con those construction companies because, again, they want to know what their KPIs are and they want to make sure they're meeting their KPIs. And then over here to the right, here's um, a beverage process manufacturing call to action, top five beverage process manu manufacturing mistakes to avoid. Uh, Companies want to avoid mistakes. And then if you put their, your keyword term, and this is more horizontal because we're not talking about um, just beverage manufacturing, we're talking about process manufacturing too. And so we want to make sure we're serving this content up to beverage process manufacturers. And then here is a call to action for, it's more horizontal for Acumatica KPIs for distribution. And Donna, I wanted to ask you, are you okay with your VARs taking these call to actions? And um, let's say they wanted to focus on food service distributors. Would you be okay if they took this call to action from your website and just altered it a little bit with a vertical keyword in it and put this call to action on some of their website pages? Is Acumatica okay with partners doing yeah. that? Yeah, we, we fully support it, and um, any partner that's looking to to leverage resource that we have or some of the content pieces that we allow folks to rebrand or use as is. And a lot of the ISVs offer similar um, white papers available for VARs to repurpose, um, so I agree with Don on that front. Taking advantage of the resources that are out there and not creating something on your own. Um, can help you extend your marketing reach that much further with minimal effort. And so here's a couple of vertical landing pages that are examples that are coming from those call to actions that I just showed you. So top five process manufacturing challenges and how to overcome them with automation, landing page form, and then once you complete the form, it automatically redirects you to the uh, download. You can also take the visitor to a thank you page automatically redirect them to a thank you page where they can find the the white paper or flipbook or whatever it is that you're you're giving out uh, you can also send them to a thank you page and that has vertical content on it so building your content strategy to resonate with that vertical audience is key because you're compelling them through the process and then here's a couple CTA examples for ebooks or flipbooks uh, here we have one from Acumatica for the healthcare industry CFO, so specifically targeting a title in an industry, uh, which I'm sure you guys would be happy providing similar CTAs like this if you had VARs who wanted to focus on healthcare industry. Um, here's a couple other healthcare CTAs um, that are you know, specifically focusing on those verticals. So in our last webinar, this is webinar two of our three-part three part series, we were talking about creating content to attract 
the buyer in the awareness stage to your website. So wherever your content resides in those vertical uh, arenas on the internet, whether it's LinkedIn groups, whether it's Twitter conversations, whether it's the search engines, because you have those long tail keywords that are associated with your vertical industry that are much easier to get. So then the target visitor comes back and you have these target CTAs. So our last webinar, we reviewed on how to create that content. So now we're talking about how to convert your contacts to on your website with targeted CTAs. And then creating those vertical landing pages for your ebook. So here's one that Sage Intact created here. So again, targeting the healthcare industry. So if your content is centered around an industry, you'll be driving that related traffic back to your content. I can't, I can't uh, accentuate that enough. So that targeted traffic visits your content and they want to, you want to speak like them. You want to be an expert in their industry because they know that you have a solution for them and you're dedicated to them. The vanilla words like distribution or manufacturing may not resonate with a medical device distributor. So you might want to put medical device distribution into in your content rather than just distribution. Because we try to talk to everyone, you might not be talking to anyone. And then here's some uh, CTA examples for Lunch and Learn. So here we're talking about compliance issues. So it's, you could get an expert. Um, if you're focusing on the healthcare industry, there's all kinds of different compliance issues for all, many different industries. So if you're focusing on the healthcare industry, maybe you have a HIPAA expert come in for a lunch, lunch and learn. You invite your contacts in your database that might want to learn about HIPAA and they'll come to your lunch and learn to be educated. And then maybe at the end, you could talk about how your solution will automate that compliance. And PCI compliance is something as well. Um, maybe you could have somebody from APS come into your lunch and learn and talk about PCI compliance. And then that way you get more interest in your lunch and learn because you're talking about an issue that affects the company. And then obviously you can wrap around your vertical solution for that particular company for PCI compliance. That's more horizontal. Um, revenue recognition is another big compliance issue. So you can invite people to a revenue recognition compliance, educational lunch and learn. So there's all kinds of educational topics surrounding compliance that you might want to um, invite people to lunch and learns for. And then you can talk about Acumatica or whatever ERP you represent. And then here's a an example of a vertical landing page that one of Acumatica, Acumatica's partners used. And Acuma, this Acumatica partner, I believe, is a big Dynamics GP partner um, that has taken on Acumatica in the last few years. And so they are talking about how they made the switch for their internal accounting to Acumatica. And so it's not so invasive, but they're inviting their local customers, maybe for Dynamics GP to come and learn about the advantages that they experienced after switching from Dynamics to Acumatica. And then so Liz, um, I believe you created this slide. I'll go ahead and Yeah, I did. Uh, thanks. Yeah, I've got some tips I just like to share when you're talking about creating lunch and learns. I've not only um, created lunch and learns from the ground up, but presented at them not only to end users, but also to partners. And so um, have some insight that I'd like to share as you're creating your lunch and learn strategy. Uh, you, there's multiple venue considerations that you can think about, and it just depends on what type of environment, atmosphere you want to uh, present for that specific one. So I typically recommend that if you're trying to get C-suite or C-level uh, 
vertical focused contacts into an event, maybe their prospects, not existing customers of yours, oftentimes the best way to lure them in is to talk about something that is of meaning to them, right, from a vertical perspective, but then also have the, have the event at a venue that um, is whining and dining them a little bit, whether that's a fine dining establishment. I've done it where we've rented out a room at a Morton Steakhouse or um, hosted an event at a Top Golf. Top Golf is a great venue in the sense that you can, you know, golf for an hour and then they have breakout rooms that you can go into and, um, you know, pitch your presentation for the last half of that lunch and learn. So you're adding a little fun in there, which lets you get the opportunity to talk to people a little bit more versus just, you know, presenting to them and doing death by PowerPoint. Um, but you're also actually getting to engage with them so they build more trust in your relationship um, and that sort of thing. So it just depends on, on what you're looking for. If you're having a lunch and learn at your office, those work great too. For And I would focus those typically on existing customers, you know, bringing them in, showing them new tips and tricks, showing them a new industry solution, um, bringing them in to, um, you know, learn about some additional vertical enhancements you may have and that sort of thing. So if you're, you know, focusing on existing customers and trying to do more add-on or upsells to them, um, having it at your office is completely, completely fine. Another option is, is a lot of the ERPs uh, and e-commerce plat partners, publishers that you work with have offices located throughout the country. And so sometimes they'll let you rent out um, their space, even often free of charge, um, to host your event there. So um, by doing that, you not only get the recognition of that brand name, but also get the opportunity in some cases to have them co-present with you, which is a big draw. And so that kind of gives me to my next bullet point is that bring in industry experts to present, whether that's from the software publisher, maybe they're, you're doing a manufacturing focus and you can bring in one of the you know, product managers for manufacturing from Acumatica, as an example, uh, bring in an existing customer that is a manufacturing vertical focused um, to talk about, you know, how they're using the system and, and how they have benefited from, from using the solutions that you're trying to sell out to the world. Uh, and then bring in subject matter ex experts. And so this could be somebody as simple as a consultant at your organization, or it could be somebody that's an industry expert that does speaking engagements and you want to bring them in um, just to share more so that it, maybe they have nothing to do with the software that you're providing. And so there's tons of opportunities to have uh, experts there to help share their insight. And, and the thing about having an industry expert as part of your CTA and as part of your um, venue or as part of your promotion is that that really draws people in. Um, and then the last thing is if you are um, able to um, go ahead and get CPE certified so that you can be accredited and offer credit. A lot of times accountants, um, uh, CPAs are looking for courses to help them keep their, you know, their CPEs up to date so that they get in enough in a year. And if they can get that by spending a couple hours at the Lunch and Learn, um, that, that's another draw to get more attendance there. And then I think there's one bullet missing, Adrian, if you could just click one more time there, that I would recommend that typically you try to keep the um, Lunch and Learn to around two to three hours max. I typically try to do it within the hour and a half to two hour time frame. I've seen them as long as two, but if you do as three, I should say, but if you do it any longer than that, um, it ends up being too long of a day or away from the office, uh, especially for the C-suite to keep them to have their attention. So um, I would just try to keep it within the two hour or less time frame. And then, you know, we call them lunch and learns, but these can be during lunch, they can be during breakfast, or they could be during the happy hour, after hours um, time frame too. So do whatever, um, you know, play around with it, see what works best, what brings the most attendance for you guys. And um, Hopefully these tips can help you all with your vertical lunch and learns as you go out and start to create them on your own. And so here we also recommend offering product tours, but keeping the um, CTAs focused on that vertical. So there's a product tour for healthcare companies. Here's a product tour for construction companies and land developers. So your content is resonating with that vertical market. They know exactly what they're going to look at. They're going to see their type of company in action inside of the product tour. And then also customer testimonials. You want to be able to sort on customer testimonials based on industry. So these are, this is a great 
resource on Acumatica's website that you can pull up different industry success stories. And you, if you don't have a specific industry right now that you're focusing on and you would like to focus on a specific industry, I'd recommend pulling up some of these success stories and creating content based on the problem that was solved for in these success stories. So you can build a whole campaign around the problems that these companies solved using Acumatica and build out your, um, your content for different topics that the, that Acumatica is solving. Uh, and they're, it's pretty clear exactly what was the problem when they were started to review Acumatica and what was the solution. They do a great job of uh, outlining that and you can build your whole campaign off of these success stories. So this is uh, your slide, Liz. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the first click here and uh, thank you so much for reviewing this with us. Yeah, so this is just a couple of examples of some case studies that we've done here at APS. And um, you know, we're talking about vertical industry and when we started out doing these case studies, they were just happy APS payments customers, right? Uh, but we made a concerted effort to make sure that the industry was always called out on these case studies um, so that we could not only do industry marketing around them, but also then know who to call if we have another payments customer that's looking to, to switch over to us. You know, we have a good reference for them that's in their industry that can talk their talk and, and help move them along in the funnel. And so um, I always recommend if you do do case studies, whether they're testimonials or not, to include the, vert the industry vertical in the you know, the description of the testimonial, if you can, or in the scenario where we have an actual case study that we use, have it on the front page, front and center, so that it's really out there for people to, to catch their eye and, and show, them, show them to try to have more interest in what you're trying to get in front of them. If you could click the next one. And then um, take these testimonials that you get from the, your case studies and sprinkle them throughout your website, sprinkle them throughout your data sheets, Sprinkle them throughout your service promotions. Sprinkle them throughout um, social promotions you do, your blogs, et cetera. Um, and you know, do whatever you can to tie in not only the vertical keywords, but also that quote together so that you, as people are coming across them and coming to the various pages or social posts that you have out there on that specific topic, they're not only able to see that you can service their industry with the solutions that you're offering, but you have happy customers um, that are also part of their industry. And then last but not least, I've just got another example here of a CTA that we created for one of our um, wholesale customers that um, it shows, you know, it's promoting you to drive to, die, drive to their case study to, to learn more about it. But, you know, we include the wholesale in the description uh, of the first front and center, what we're talking about there. And we put some data in there, data points that they saved almost 40,000 40, annually um, by switching um, to use level three processing. And so another thing that we could have done with this, and we actually have some variations of the CTA, is we could have put the ERP name in there as well, so that you've got multiple things to grab the attention um, of that vertical target that you're going after. And so, thank you, Liz. Uh, and so here is another way to capture the attention of your ERP buyer. Um, offer those comparison data sheets specific to the ERP that you're representing and maybe the ERP that they're migrating off or the ERP that they're comparing with you. It's critical, I think, to find out what other solutions the buyer is looking at and have that understanding how you solve pain, their specific pain, in comparison to the other products that they might be looking at. So not offering your competitors before you know that they're looking at them, but taking them through a line by line comparison helps them come to the conclusion that you might have a better solution for their specific problem. And then offering those, um, those industry specific customers that you have that have migrated from QuickBooks to Acumatica or are comparing another solution, you can you can easily 
offer success stories on how your product, um, how your solution is a better fit by helping the um, industry buyer walk in the shoes of another customer. And with a video or a success story, it just really helps compel them to come to the conclusion that you might have a superior solution and your expertise is just the differentiator because you focus on that vertical. And then here's another comparison data sheet. And I'm sure Acumatica would love for you guys to use all of this. So you could just take it right from their website, uh, comparing Acumatic, Acumatica to Oracle NetSuite. And then maybe you could tune this up a little bit for a specific industry. Um, and kind of take their format here and then maybe add some line items for their specific industry. And so walking through into the sales process, if your marketing team is supporting your sales team, then you'll have all of this content that will support the sales team through the sales product. I mean, so through the sales um, sales um, demonstration and, and uh, presentation. So your sales team will know what vertical you are focusing on. They'll know how it's worked for vertical buyers in the past. So they'll, it'll be easier for them to understand your company and understand how to present your solution because it specifically addresses that industry pain. So using that vertical language, and continuing to use that vertical language while they're demonstrating the solution. And while they're demonstrating the solution, maybe using the customer's data, they can see it exactly how it would apply to them. And then showing how the solution meets the industry compliance requirements, for example. So audit compliance, revenue recognition compliance, gap compliance, there's all kinds of compliance these companies have issues with and need to automate, and that just helps them achieve the ROI that they're looking for. And then um, maybe demonstrating a free trial with the customer's data. So here we have a landing page that um, offers a free trial, and it alludes to offering that free trial that is specific for that industry. So review the implementation plan with the customer and mistakes to avoid for that specific industry and sales and marketing are, are working together in this at this time. And you schedule, you meet with the customer, you've demonstrated that industry specific solution, you get time on the calendar for the implementation to start and set expectations of how long it will take and make sure that the urgency is stressed to start relieving that pain and show that ROI for that industry. And the sooner you get started, the sooner they'll start getting ROI and walk the, the prospect through that customer conversion and start the project. And so we at ERP VAR use an inbound marketing system to track all of our contact conversions, and with that inbound marketing system, it's, it's HubSpot, we can see the industry that, for most of our contacts, because HubSpot just automatically applies the industry to each of our contacts. So we can see the number of employees that HubSpot has been able to retrieve from different resources on the internet that they pull that the, this information in and we can really target vertical, our vertical content to the specific industry for the content in our database, for the contact in our database. So we can build smart content that these contacts see when they come back to our website that's only, that they only care about, that's only relevant to them. So we can do that using these lists, smart lists that we build and deliver that vertical content specific to their industry. And then um, Liz, I wanted to see, did you have any, um, have you guys been using, I know you're using HubSpot, 
and you're using, you know, the inbound marketing tools within HubSpot. So um, can you talk to delivering that smart vertical content to the contest in your database? I know we're working on some projects with you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can kind of go back to that case study example. You know, I mentioned we've got multiple variations of that CTA for reading the case study. And in some cases, we'll say uh, the ERP on it as well. So it might say Sage Wholesale Manufacturer, right? Um, and so if they come to um, a vertical page, uh, a landing page that we've created that's just not ER it's ERP agnostic, we'll render up the um, one that just lists wholesale manufacturing on it, right? But if they go and come to our Sage integrations page, for example, on our website, we'd render up the one that says Sage Wholesale to try to make it even more specific to that user. And so um, tools like HubSpot are really great because they let you create content based on various things. So once you've got the date, people in your database, you can really use that data, whether it's employee size, whether it's industry, whether it's ERP, whether it's e-commerce, and really put content in front of them that you know will resonate with them so that they're more likely to click through and turn into clients um, for your company. Thank you okay, so great. much, Liz. I'm going to close it out with our contact information here. You should be able to see it on the screen. We have a question for you, Donna. Thank you for this question. Donna, does Acumatica have a comparison sheet for Acumatica versus SAP Business One and versus JD Edwards? I don't know that we have one for JD Edwards, but I think we have one for SAP. But I can follow up with our product team to make sure. And that's something we can also request for them to do for us. Perfect. And we'll, we have the contact information, so I'll send you the report, Donna. Um, awesome. You can follow up with that question. Will and do. then the, the hardest prospects are the ones that are already have SAP Business One or JD, JD Edwards. How can we convince those prospects to look at Acumatica? Well, you know, we would recommend focusing on that industry expertise that you hone in on and that you've dedicated yourself to delivering. And that differentiates you as the VAR that you can actually hold their hand through an industry specific solution because you have other examples that you are working on or that you have customers that needed those issues addressed. So when you do communicate with these customers that are already on something else, you can kind of hone in on those pain points for that industry and see how they're addressing those pain points with that solution. Do you guys, Liz or Donna, do you have any feedback there? Yeah, I was also yeah, I think that, go ahead. Go ahead, Donna. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so for us, I think, it is leveraging some of those success stories. And even if you wanted to reach out to the pre-sales team, we offer a lot of help around that. If you're looking for a story about somebody who's converted from either one of those solutions, and those are typically your larger installations. So we've got some really good solid success stories around there. And that's gonna be the biggest selling point for Acumatica as a whole. But then I couldn't agree with Adrian Moore that talk about the industry and get focused because once you start doing that, your competition goes away. And, then and I was just I gonna want... expand on, oh, on that, Adrian, um, and I agree with both you and Donna is that instead of focusing uh, the conversation on product, focus it on your expertise in that industry. Um, a lot of times these ERPs will have um, certain functionality that may or may not be able to be provided by third parties. So one thing you might want to look into is this customer that's maybe on SAP, can they, and based on your industry expertise on what solutions you've put together for your other customers in that specific industry, find out if there's any gaps and then come to the table with that um, to determine if, you know, you may be able to provide a more complete solution for Acumatica. Um, based on the ecosystem that they've built around their solution that integrates seamlessly. Yeah, if you're all about that industry and they can tell that you get their industry and all of the content that you provide, 
that resonates with that. We work with a, um, a number of channel partners where we can deliver up their specific content to those contacts who fill out forms on our website that don't belong to anybody else. So if we generated the content, we can create rules in our uh, system for the individual contacts that if when they come back, we can serve up specific partner related content to that contact. So it is, there are rules, it's a rule based system and you create these workflows. You can also send those contacts emails when they come back to your website based on what they looked at on your website. So there are, these are all workflows. There's a few levels of HubSpot. There's a $300 a month version of HubSpot where you get the content management system and uh, you can build out your content on the um, on the HubSpot servers and you have your landing pages and your blog or your, even your entire website on HubSpot. Keep, you could keep some of your hub, uh, website on your WordPress system, but that um, level of HubSpot doesn't come with the workflows that I just mentioned. In order to get those workflows, you would need to move to the professional edition. And that starts out at $9,600 a year. But if we're a HubSpot certified partner, that professional edition requires $3,000 to $4,000 worth of training directly from HubSpot if you buy it from them. We can waive that training and tailor training to you um, and it can, we can reduce that number. So, and also offer a discount. Um, we've never been denied discounts that we've asked for. So if you work with us, since we're a HubSpot certified partner, um, we can implement the system how we just talked about today that works for an ERP VAR. So we would love the opportunity to do that. Thank you for your question, Tune. Thank you, you guys. All right, take care, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, everyone.